what is the agenda for today? Um, we are going to talk about updates that um, immigration had been uh, uh, doing some announcements about uh, the temporary pathway uh, to permanent residency, um, what is happening with the virtual refugee hearings, um, an announcement made by CBS8, and after the updates, we are going to talk about the refugee hearing preparation, um, what do you need to gather evidence, and what is going to happen the day of all your refugee hearing. Then who we are. Um, FCJ Refugee Center is an organization that um, is going to is turning 30 years of working and working together with refugees and precarious migrants. We are one of the few organizations that works with people uh, with our status. Um, then anybody that comes to our door, um, we try to to um, provide any service to see how we can uh, gain a status for that person. FCJ Refugee Center was funded uh, by two former refugees from El Salvador, Loli Rico and Francisco Rico, and they are still our co-directors. Uh, what we do, we have, we don't, function as a shelter, but we have um, four houses. The main house is where we are located today, uh, 208 Oakwood. The offices are here in the house. Also, we have three more houses and uh, where we host women uh, with children. Um, men, uh, most of them are refugee claimants or uh, survivors of domestic violence. Also, we have um, settlement services if um, the clients need to register to a school, uh, to find a doctor, um, housing, um, all the settlement needs that a refugee claimant, um, we will try to support. Also, we have a primary care clinic for people that are with our status in Canada, that they don't have access to OHIP, the uh, health care or they don't have access to the interim federal health that is the one that covers refugee claims. Also we have a program access to education. We try to uh, assist uh, people without status to register the kids in a school. Also we have been um, doing some work around uh, how refugee claimants should um, access um, post-secondary education and people without status too. We have a vibrant youth network and then um, if any uh, one that is listening to us today, um, if you have a family member that is a youth or you have a friend, uh, please uh, refer them to FCJ Youth Network. It's a really nice way to connect with other youth um, around GTA, but also um, the youth, have, they get connections, they get uh, trainings, then it's a really nice way uh, for them to start uh, the integration part in our community, then I really uh, strongly recommend to connect with the youth network. Um, also, we have a migrant workers mobile program uh, connected with the anti-human trafficking because uh, in our own backyard here in Toronto, we have many uh, persons that have been trafficked uh, because sexual exploitation or labor exploitation. Unfortunately, we call this mother as labor. Many people have been promised to come to Canada to work uh, to have a better life, to have a good job, but when they arrive, they are uh, trafficking in a, in a exploitation situation and um, they live in horrible conditions. Sometimes the papers are taken away. They are always threatened by deportation. Then um, also the migrants workers mobile, uh, many temporary 
uh, farmers workers come to Canada to work and sometimes they face um, exploitation and um, conditions uh, with the employment situation that are not right and um, we um, work with them too around the GTA. Um, also, we have public education and these webinar series are part of that. Also, we have immigration help and refugee protection. That is the area that I am um, the coordinator. We do uh, all the support for refugee claimants to call legal aid, to find a lawyer, to fill out forms, to do an appeals, humanitarian and compassionate applications, work permits, um, permanent resident applications, sponsorship. Then um, this is the area that um, I work with. And this is possible because we have many uh, ref, um, volunteers and pro bono students from law students that uh, they support us doing this work. Um, I'm going to start then with the updates. Um, in on August 20, uh, the uh, August 14, sorry, 2020, the federal government announced that um, they are going to start a temporary pathway for permanent residency for refugee claimants and um, rejected refugee claimants that have been working in the healthcare sector during the COVID-19. Um, then um, we have been waiting for more details about the process, how it's going to be, through which application. Um, on December, um, this week, sorry, they announced that on December 14th, next Monday, um, IRCC, Immigration and Refugee Citizenship Canada, will be start accepting applications. But again, they just did the announcement that the applications are going to be open on December 14th, but they didn't say, okay, you need to fill out these forms. Um, this is how the application is going to look like. They just said um, all the information is going to appear on December 14th on the IRCC. Then what people need to start looking is uh, for now, if um, you think you can apply through this program, is to start collecting uh, your uh, proving that you can be part of this uh, healthcare sector. Um, also, um, okay, they, they they have been saying who can apply then. Um, unfortunately, the list is very, like, very short. It's nurses, eight nurses, uh, PSWU that have been working in nursing homes or in private settings with an agency. Um, then, but again, um, and those covers rejected refugee claims. Then we are going to see uh, on Monday exactly how the process is going to look like, if if we need to fill out forms or how it's going to be. Um, also, what they said is, if you are a refugee claimant and you think you can apply to this program, your refugee case is going to be put on hold, and um, or if you are doing an appeal, it's going to be put on hold, and then you will be moved to be uh, to start the new process for the permanent residency. Uh, but if by any chance you are rejected with a new pilot project, then your case will be sent back for determination with the Immigration and Refugee Board, and then you will have a refugee hearing, and they will determine if you need protection in Canada. Then, um, again, if you are waiting for a refugee hearing, your case will be put on hold. Also, um, this week they they announced too that um, they are um, they know that some refugee claimants who contracted COVID-19 um, and pass away, um, then they are going to extend uh, this program to the family members um, who arrive in Canada before August 14. Um, also, they announced that. Um, People that, um, for example, if you were studying to become a PSW, a personal support worker, and you were doing your internship um, to graduate, they are going to accept that uh, internship experience uh, 
um, paid or unpaid as part of your um, experience because the program asks for 120 uh, days of experience. But if you don't have it, then you can acquire the experience until August 2021. Then this program is opening again December 14, uh, but it's going to be open until um, August 2021. Mm. Also, the the family members that are with the uh, main applicant in Canada, they are going to be included in the application. Um, but remember, this is going to be a permanent residency application. Then any anyone who wants to become a permanent resident in Canada, they need to pass the admissibility requirements. Um, including uh, criminality, security, and health. Um, then if a refugee claimant have any inadmissibility, this is going to be uh, a problem to become a permanent resident through any application as a refugee claimant, uh, as a sponsor uh, with this new pathway. Then um, the inadmissibility requirements will it still taking place, even if you qualify under new uh, temporary pathway. Also, unfortunately, um, this week, um, Canada Border Services Agency, CBSA, who is the uh, institution in Canada that are in charge of removing um, people, uh, they announced that they are going to start uh, removing uh, clients from Canada, uh, those that are rejected refugee claimants, um, or they did a humanitarian compassion and that was rejected, and they have a removal order. Also, some uh, clients that apply before for PRA, that pre-removal risk assessment, they are going to start contacting them, and they are going to start trying to remove uh, many organizations around Canada. We had been um, talking and getting together and requesting CBSA that um, because of the pandemic, this is not a good time, plus the holidays to start removing people. Um, they also, we said uh, some rejected refugee claimants may be eligible to apply for the new pathway program, um, the one that I just spoke about. And they said, um, if the person goes for an interview with CBSA and they can tell the, the agent, um, I'm going to apply for this new program, then CBSA is going to put on hold the removal. Then you need to be uh, really clear if you are called by CBSA, if you have a pending a sponsorship application, if you have a pending a humanitarian and compassionate, or if you are going to apply for the new pathway program, you need to tell the officer. And they said that um, they have instructions not to remove the person. But we will see. And But again, we have been asking CBSA not to call anybody to be deported at this time, because Canada is a hot spot uh, with um, people getting COVID-19, uh, also, people, if they are deported, how they are going to say goodbye to their loved ones, how they are going to um, sell the things if they need to sell the things that we don't think so, that uh, right now CBSA should be removing people from Canada. Um, also, a uh, Many refugee claimants that had been waiting for a hearing had been contacted by the Immigration and Refugee Board um, trying to uh, schedule in virtual hearings. Um, we um, recently, uh, I was part of a workshop with the Immigration and Refugee Board through the Canadian Council for Refugees. And uh, we asked the question, if a refugee claimant that receive a letter uh, requesting them to have the virtual hearing, what is going to happen if they said no, if they prefer uh, per, uh, an in-person hearing? And the answer for them was um, 
because people were was worried saying, okay, if I don't accept the virtual hearing, then when my hearing is going to be scheduled? And they promised that if, if you as a refugee claimant don't want to have a virtual hearing, that you prefer uh, in-person hearing and your lawyer probably is recommending that too. Um, you can request it and they said, you should not be like put back on the list that you, you should have the right to have your in-person hearing as soon as possible too. Anyway, they recognize that virtually hearings can, can be scheduled faster than in-person hearings because COVID-19 restrictions, they cannot have like, they can operate like before having many hearings at the same time um, because all the health uh, safety restrictions. Uh, but they said they shouldn't get um, like delayed so long again if they prefer in-person hearings. Um, then um, also um, the IRB is telling us that if you are called to go to a virtual hearing, um, they are sending the communications to all parties. Means if you have a lawyer, your lawyer will receive one. You as a refugee claimant will receive a communication that they are calling you for a virtual hearing. And um, uh, also they want that the refugee claimant will have access to all the necessary technology. Um, and um, they recognize that many refugee claimants, um, they live in rooming houses, that, that they will not have like, a private space uh, to have the hearing, but they still want to do a remote hearing or they don't have access to the technology, then the IRB is going to um, try to make available a room at the IRB um, that the person will have access to the technology. Or sometimes the lawyers will be comfortable and they will prefer that you come to their office and, and do the, the virtual hearing with them. Um, they are using Microsoft Teams. Um, they are not using Zoom. They are not using other uh, popular platforms because they said Microsoft Teams are more secure and that's the platform that they are using then if you are close to be a scheduled for a virtual hearing download the microsoft uh, teams app is free make you comfortable with this app um, play with the app that uh, because when you go to the uh, with your lawyer to have the preparation sometimes the lawyer um, will not have the time to go with you how to use the technology then um, try to make uh, be familiar using again there is an app called microsoft teams and that's the one that the irb is going to use anyway when you receive the convocation for a virtual hearing the IRB will send you all the instructions, what is the technology that you need, that you are going to need a camera, access to um, speakers. Also, they are going to let you know that they are going to record the virtual hearing. And um, then again, the, the app is Microsoft Teams. Um, also, since November 2nd, the Refugee Appeal Division, that is part of the IRB, the Immigration and Refugee Board, uh, that is the division that um, hear the, or decide the, the appeals for rejected refugee claimants, they start again um, scheduling virtual hearings for those that requested a hearing again with the Appeal Division. Um, they are asking again the, the, the client, the appellant, and the lawyer, if they are represented by a lawyer, if they are comfortable with the, with the virtual hearing. But the appeal division is um, mostly doing it virtually. But again, you have the right to say you want an in-person hearing. 
um, also because Immigration and Refugee and Citizenship Canada, IRCC, is the offices are closed. Um, they recognize the people that are in Canada that may wish to claim protection. They didn't have a way to do it. Then um, they create this email that you can see in blue. And um, if you want to apply to become a refugee claimant, then you need to write to this email requesting that you are in Canada. You need to send proof of your address, copy of your passport, and then they will email you back with the forms. You need to fill out the forms, the basis of claim, and they will send you an acknowledgement uh, document saying, yes, you need to wait for your eligibility interview. Um, I just want to caution that um, if you once are in this webinar and you want to claim protection, try to get legal aid, try to get legal advice, or try to contact any community center like us uh, to help you through this process. Um, because if you write to this email and you said, I'm here, I want to claim protection, but you don't follow up with them, it means that is they they may consider that you abandon the case and later on if you try to claim protection again you you will be rejected because you already tried to make a uh, claim protection then um you need to be careful and again you need to get legal advice or a community center that can help you with this process also, uh, because IRCC, Immigration and Refugee Citizen Canada, is closed, they recognize that uh, many refugee claimants that have been in Canada for more than two years, the refugee ID had expired. Then, um, and we know that with the refugee ID document, like people call the brown paper, you have access to the interim federal health. And um, we know that sometimes when you go to a hospital or to get uh, medical health, um, they can say to you, this refugee uh, paper is expired, but you need to advocate for yourself and let them know that they, ch with your, your UC number, remember uh, that in this paper you have a UC number, UCI number, tell them, could you please check my U uh, UC number, uh, with that number you can see if my refugee ID is still valid, even though my brown paper set is already expired because immigration is closed and um, they um, they are not renewing right now, but then they made it still valid. Uh, don't just take a no for an answer, okay? Also, um, people that are applying from uh, to renew the work permit from October. Um, oh, okay, sorry, no, this is about the eligibility interview. Uh, sorry about that. It's the next slides. Um, I, we know people that apply for uh, refugee status from October, November, uh, and during the pandemic, during the spring, they were scheduled to have um, an eligibility interview. Unfortunately, until you get the eligibility interview, you will not get your work permit. Uh, we get many calls from clients saying, um, I apply, um, I had the acknowledgement letter, but I haven't got my work permit. Unfortunately, until you get your eligibility interview, immigration will not issue you your first work permit. Um, I know it's an unfortunate situation, but um, that's the regulation. Also, if you are not sure that um, when you claim protection, remember that you fill out some forms, then go and check the Schedule 12. In that form, at the end of the form, the application, there is like a check box. box. If you check, yes, I want a work permit, then the day of the eligibility interview, you should be um, um, issue your uh, work permit. Um, it's not that you are going to get it right away, but um, if you checked in the Schedule 12 that you are requesting a work permit, you should get it after the eligibility interview in two or three weeks. If you don't receive it, then you need to call immigration or you can contact us and we check with IRCC because sometimes what happens is the day of the eligibility interview, the officer forgets to uh, issue your work permit. 
and that happens. Um, also, um, for people that have been renewed the work permit since October, um, we um, unfortunately, because of, of the pandemic, the, the renewal of a work permit is taking around six months, um, four months. Then uh, people um, get uh, the work ex um, permit expired, so employers are telling the employees you cannot work because your work permit expired, your social insurance number is expired, because remember, your social social insurance number is is attached to your work permit the day that your work permit expired you unfortunately your social insurance number expired then they recognize that many people were facing a hard situation uh, that they apply on time to renew the work permit but they didn't get it on time then immigration now is producing this document talking about employee status and requested the employer to recognize that even though your social insurance number expired and your work permit expired, you are with the employee status and you should be able to still working with those documents expired. Um, then this is a good document. Um, and again, it, this document um, had been sent it after for refu uh, refugee claimants that are renewing the work permit after October. If you apply before October, you didn't get this document. Um, also, the Immigration and Refugee Board um, had been talking about file review process. What is this? Um, they um, had been encouraging refugee claimants and lawyers to get ready uh, the file. What what is to get ready the file? Um, like to have to collect all the evidence that you need. You are going to need to prove your case. Uh, remember that sometimes you need documents from back home that they need to be translated. Then um, they are um, encouraging uh, lawyers to get everything ready that they can go and see your file and they may decide your claim without a hearing. If they have all the evidence, if they don't have credibility issues, if they have all the answers in front of them, they may decide your case without a refugee hearing, um, or they may call you just for um, a short hearing. Um, I'm going to have a, a break of like five minutes um, because during the break, I want you to have time to write your uh, questions. Then uh, we will resume um, at 11.02. Then take this time to uh, write your questions. And also I'm going to, to um, take the opportunity to see if there is any questions in the chat box and this is my contact you can take a picture but this powerpoint is going to be uh, available to all of you um carolina tevez who is our uh, uh, person who coordinates all the webinars she will send you the powerpoint presentation then uh, but if you want to take a picture right now and you take my email and contact information, you can do it. Okay, again, I'm going to start um, reading the questions. Um, okay, somebody says, I have a problem about my SIN number and work permit that I didn't receive after 15 months landed to Canada. Okay. Uh, also, I need to get PSW certification. Could you please kind of help me as well? Um, Abbas, I need more information, okay? Then um, write to my email because um, I need to, to talk to you. What is your status in Canada? You are a refugee claimant and what happened, okay? Um, then please um, write to my email or call me, um, I will be available this afternoon. I need more information. 
sorry, the person from Iran, we don't have an interpreter available right now. Um, okay, the other question is, if someone works security guard job at hospitals, healthcare with nurses, can they apply for PR? Yeah, he do. Um, the list, it says PSW, nurses, um, nurses aides, um, then um, you you said you start working in the health clinic for summer, but doing what? Um, then depends on what you were doing there. And if you claim protection before March, if you are a refugee claimant, you claim, you claim protection before March and you have a valid work permit, but depends what you are doing in the health clinic. And, and probably we will get more answers on Monday on, on the 14th. Um, I don't know, 14 is Monday. I'm just, now I'm confused. A anyway, it's December 14th um, that the government is going to put exactly the list. Um, but I don't know what you were doing in the clinic. The other Fatiya, I came to Canada in February 2018. My hearing is in February 2021. Since I had been here for three years, do I need to provide proof of what I had been doing here in Canada? No, Fatiya. Um, your case will be um, anything your hearing is about what happened back home, why you were forced to flee your country, why you need protection. Um, if you have been here in Canada unemployed, um, or you have been working, or you have a beautiful job, doesn't matter. Um, what they want to see is if you were forced to flee your country, why? you have access to state protection, uh, but nothing related what you have been doing here for the three years. Okay, again, you can be uh, unemployed, living on the streets, or you can have a wonderful job in Canada doing a lot of money, it doesn't matter. It's everything is about what happened to you if you return to your country. If I have to translate some documents, how I can do that? If I check from outside and it's so expensive. When I ask lawyer to say, I have to do that. In this case, what should I do? Prasanna, um, are you paying private your lawyer or if you are with legal aid? Legal aid should provide you with um, some money for interpretation and the lawyer should let you know, okay, with the money from legal aid, this is the documents that we can translate. And sometimes, unfortunately, um, lawyers will run out of legal aid money. Then they will ask the refugee claimant to do it outside. Um, what is, uh, Prasanna, you need to, to do the translation of the documents from which language? Sometimes you can access um, free services. But um, these are, it's not easy to find them. Um, then if, Prasanna, if you have like a friend that you trust and you know that they speak your language of origin and I speak good English, they can do the translation for you. Um, if there are no like official documents, sometimes if you have a birth certificate, a death certificate, it, those documents, sometimes the lawyer will ask you that it needs to be with official um, translation. But if it's just reports, um, in my presentation, I will tell you if you have a good friend that can do it for you, how that friend should certify the translations, okay? Could you please tell again about without hitting? Para, okay. Um, just one second. Uh, what happened is um, the IRB is reviewing the files. We know that at this moment, they have around 90,000 cases uh, waiting for a hearing in Canada. Then 
they recognize that they want to to get rid of of the backlog um then they are they they uh, have some irb uh, staff going through the files and if they see that the case is ready for a decision um then they will decide your case by written decision but it must be a positive decision they cannot reject your case without a hearing okay farah then um if they, if they see that your case is complete that your case have all the evidence that they don't have questions about credibility that they don't have questions about safety uh, con uh, sorry, uh, internal fly. Those things I'm going to explain later on. Then they can decide your case without a hearing, with a written decision, but it needs to be a positive decision. They cannot deny you without a hearing, okay? Um, okay, Nilam, a student work permit expired. Can the client work without the work permit, not a refugee? Uh, Nilam, I need to talk to you. Um, because I need more information about the situation. Can you assist the person having financial issues hiring a lawyer, but she has a file and documents in hands? Um, yeah. Um, yeah, he do. Um, again, we need to talk, but yes, if you don't have money, uh, you can get access to legal aid, and I'm going to explain that too. My hearing date is scheduled for April 2021, and I still do not have all my information because I'm having difficulty getting them from home. What do I do? Uh, Lucena, uh, if the lawyer asks you uh, for evidence and you cannot get it because COVID-19 in your country, the IRB is aware of that, but you need to let them know and you need to let the lawyer why you cannot have access to documents. Um, the IRB recognized that uh, because COVID, many institutions are closed, but depends what kind of documents. But you need to prove then that you try to get them. And for example, if you need a report from, um, from a judge or a police station and they cannot provide to you because they are closed because COVID, but you need to prove that you tried to get it and why you couldn't get it. And then explain that to, do, to your lawyer and the IRB is conscious about that. But you need to try your best to get them and to prove that you try to do it. Um, Lucena also said, also I have selected work and study, but only got the work permit. How do I go about getting a study permit? I know that many refugees claimants uh, check uh, in the schedule 12 that they want to work and study. What happened with the study permit is that the immigration will only provide a study permit if you have a letter of acceptance from the institution. And remember, as a refugee claimant, if you want to study in a, in a college or university, you need to pay as an international student. But if we are talking to a study doing um, um, a short course um, that you can pay or a course that Ontario Works will pay for you or it's a free course, you need to get a study permit, you need to have the letter of acceptance of the institution. With that letter, you can reapply again for the study permit. Um, if you want, yeah, then um, that's why they didn't send it to you. To get a study permit, you need to do again the application and prove that you have an acceptance letter of the institution that you want to study. You refugee claimants can go to a study if they are uh, less than 19 years old, they can go to high school without a study permit. Um, also, if you are a refugee claimant, you can go uh, have access to ESL classes, link classes. But any other institution, you need a study permit and you need a letter from that institution. If no immigration will not give it to you just because you check that you want a study permit. Can someone who doesn't have a brown paper but has a UC number be given work permit? Uh, no. Um, uh, you need to have, um, probably you just 
have the acknowledgement letter. Uh, unfortunately, you need to wait for the eligibility interview, Ikena. Um, until you get the eligibility interview, you cannot get the, the work permit. Uh, yes, uh, June, we will send uh, the, the PowerPoint presentation to all of you. Also, you can go to our website and the PowerPoint presentation slides will be available. Um, yeah, you can go to our website um, and um, you will find the recorded of, of this seminar. Um, yeah, my clock was, I was saying 11.02 and it was 11.12. Yeah, sorry about that. Shutrika says, I can hear anything. I don't know if you fixed the problem. Uh, Ms. Anur, it's been two years already. I didn't get any uh, hearing call. It's happening usually, yes. Unfortunately, we have people even waiting two, three, four years for a hearing. Because again, we in Canada, we have a backlog, backlog of around 90,000 people. Um, Okay, um, how many months before the work permit expires? Should we apply for a work permit extension? Um, right now, I will apply even four months before because uh, because COVID-19 is taking so long. Then I will, uh, before uh, we, most of the time, we, we told clients you can apply even with one month before, but now I will apply four months before. Lucena, I have Microsoft Teams download and start internet connection. What else do I need to be ready for my hearing? No, I think that's um, that's good. Um, so for the final review process, we have to send evidence that support the case, even if we haven't scheduled a hearing yet. So the case may be decided without a hearing. It's clear enough is what I understood true. Yes, Moshida. That's what's, that's what's um, happening, yeah. If my hearing, if my hearing is coming up in March 2020 and I'm eligible for pathway, what do I do? If someone is disqualified for pathway, it is possible to continue with his hearing. If it's only PSW that are qualified for pathway, what do people work in shelter? Um, Afolabi, um, you need to send the application. Uh, to see you qualify, but again, on December 14, we are going to see exactly uh, the list of people that will qualify. And then um, if you send the application, you can send a letter or talk to your lawyer because the lawyer can send a letter to the IRB and say that they want to put on hold, to like to stop for now, your refugee hitting. Um, until IRCC immigration decides your pathway to become permanent resident for the new pathway for healthcare providers. Um, if by any chance you don't qualify, then what happens is immigration will send back your file for your hearing. Then your hearing will be rescheduled again. Uh, but we don't advise to put on hold your um, hearing until you are sure that you apply for the new pathway program. And because you're hearing this in March, you will have time to see the process, to see if you qualify and send all the documents. Uh, doing interreceptionist job, Elmira. Um, no, you don't qualify. I don't think so, if you are just a receptionist. Grace, does your center provide any online training for someone looking to take a PSW course or crash program? No, um, we, don't, we don't have a, a training. Mm. I had recently started working in Canada. Will that give points towards my claim approval? Someone told me that the government want to expand the scope who can apply in addition to healthcare workers. Is that true? Chedi, we, we have been requesting to the government to expand the program, 
but um, they are looking into that, but we don't know. For now, it's just healthcare workers. Osama, is having a private lawyer makes difference in the hearing? Well, okay. No, Osama. Um, I have people paying a private lawyer that the lawyer did a bad job. And I have people who have a lawyer with legal aid and they do a beautiful job. Lawyers, um, they can work really good in your case with legal aid or, with a pri or, or being a private. Um, the best lawyers in Canada, they receive legal aid and they receive private. Um, and they work the same, paying private or paying by, by legal aid. Unfortunately, there are some lawyers that even you pay them private, they will not do a good job. Then in Canada, it doesn't matter if you are paying private or, or with legal aid. If it's a good lawyer, but also, even if you have the best lawyer in Canada, but your case is not strong, if you can't, uh, no, um, the, the, probably your lawyer is the best, but if, if the IRB don't agree that you need protection, then uh, doesn't matter, okay? What are the requirements documents to present Shady for the new program? Um, for now, it's only to prove that you are working, that you claim protection before March to 2020, that you have a valid work permit, and that you are working in the designated uh, professions, nurses, PSWU, um, and eight nurses. And um, again, on, on, on the 14th, then you can start asking for a proof of employment. And in that proof of employment that you said your experience uh, since when you have been working. Uh, in Egypt, I don't have a PSW certificate, but I have been working in the retired residence home giving support to COVID residents at food delivery, housekeeping. Um, yeah, we don't know if you will qualify, then let's, let's, uh, in EJ, Joy, um, let's wait for December 14th, because it's like you may qualify, but um, um, they really haven't uh, said more about that. Okay, is the heating the same as permanent residency? No, the heating is that if you are a refugee claimant, they will call you for a heating. Then if after you heating, they can tell you, okay, welcome to Canada, you are a convention refugee or, or protected person, then you need to apply to become a permanent resident. Um, there is a, another application and to become a permanent resident after you are accepted as a convention refugee, it can take between 15 months to 24 months. Okay, I'm going to stop here because there are many other questions, um, but um, I, I want to, to continue with the, with the presentation and I will uh, see the questions later on. Okay, um, before the, the, the COVID-19, there were something available for refugee claimants that was called um, the uh, refugee heating uh, preparation. Um, but um, unfortunately, the ready tour um, had been suspended. Uh, the IRB has been saying that they are going to start doing it virtually. Unfortunately, um, still they haven't implemented things. You can check the IRB website or you can check our website because we are going to post when the ready tour is going to be again uh, working virtually. If you, if you don't have a lawyer and you are going to be called for a hearing, and you didn't apply when you claim protection, you can still do it if you prove that you don't have 
the financial means to hire, uh, to pay a private lawyer. Then uh, you can call legal aid. These are the numbers. They are, they are going to ask you questions um, about your financial situation, if you are receiving Ontario awards, if you are working, how much uh, you are making in Canada, because probably you have been here for some time. Then if they said yes to you, you can again have a lawyer. And I mentioned before, a good lawyer will work well with uh, being uh, hired private or being hired with legal aid. Um, also, many of you, um, you fill out the basis of claim uh, that is called BOC, the BOC. Uh, is the document when you put the narrative. What I want to talk about this is that probably many of you fill out this form um, when you just came to Canada or you did it after 15 months, 15 days, sorry, 15 days before you entered to Canada or you did it because um, you hired a lawyer and the lawyer helped you. I know from my own experience because I'm a former refugee here in Canada, that those first months are really stressful, your memory is not the same, um, then my advice is to go back and check your basis of claim narrative, um, because sometimes when you were working with your lawyer, um, those are stressful days, um, sometimes your, your memory um, is not so good that you couldn't remember exactly the name that something happened or the name of somebody, then go back and review it. But also, if the basis of claim is really good, it's just to refresh your memory and see um, if you are called by, by, by uh, to have a hearing. Don't wait for your lawyer to call you to prepare you. Take your case on your own hands, review it, and um, have it refresh your memory. But if, if you go and review it and you check that you said something happened on August 14, but in reality was on the 15th, then tell your lawyer and the lawyer can do uh, that um, update until the IRB. Um, this is exactly the day, the things that happened. But um, also you cannot go back to your lawyer or the IRB and said, oh, by the way, my story now is completely different. Now I remember that I'm not claiming protection because of this, I'm claiming protection because of that. That's not going to happen, okay? You now cannot change completely your story and then you, you will think, oh, now I have a stronger case. That what I'm talking is like um, minimum details that um, probably you forgot and now you remember. But uh, I have some clients that come to me and said, oh, by the way, now I think this is not what happened to me. What happened to me is this really, really, really this. Um, you need to be careful, okay? Um, that your lawyer probably is going to say, okay, what is going on here? And it's going to be credibility issues. But if it's minor mistakes that you can explain, uh, that will be good to correct it before the hearing. Also, these are some resources here. Uh, again, these slides are going to be available, but if you want to take a picture right now, that um, um, these are links um, about guidelines, how to prepare your hearing, and they are in many languages, and they are really good. Um, oh. This is preparing your testimony. Then um, that's, um, I already told you to go back and review your narrative. Um, then uh, and start seeing how you are going to prove your story, what happened to you. Um, also, there is a national documentation package that is um, available at the IRB website. Most of the lawyers will take care of this part. Um, they will uh, put together the documentation package. Um, I'm just encourage you as a refugee claimant to go to the IRB um, 
and it's called national documentation package you put your country and they are in sections like um, constitutional rights uh, human rights uh, defenders uh, domestic violence uh, like if there is law against lgbtq community then you see them uh, and then you can go and you can educate yourself how canada see your country um, do they have information about the group that attacked me or persecute me or they have information about minorities and then you will understand what the immigration and refugee board member the person who is going to decide your case see your country and then you will be more more informed i know the the lawyers will take care of this part but i also encourage you if you read the english you speak english go and check it out okay um also you can point it out if you find any document there to your lawyer and said Oh, by the way, I went to the national documentation package. I found this um, this uh, research there, and I think it's, this is really important for my case. I just want to bring you to the attention to this document. And some lawyers will appreciate. Some lawyers will say, "Well, I already did it. Thank you so much." But why not? Um, then you need to start thinking about why your country cannot protect you. Um, if uh, you access to a state protection what was the result if you went to the police or why you couldn't go to the police because we know that in many countries corruption prevents you to go to the police and do a report because you are afraid of them that they will um that they work close to the people that is after you um also think about if you couldn't move to another part of the country um why you could relocate it to another part of the country this is part of the internal fly alternative we have many cases that the board member can say to you i believe what happened to you but also i believe that you could move internally to this other region and they can tell you why you didn't move to this city we have information that in this city or in this region the person of the group that is after you they cannot find you uh, then you need to think about if they ask you that question what are you going to, to say or if you move to another part of the country what happened there why you couldn't stay in another part of the country uh, then think about that um, the answer it cannot be okay i didn't move to the other city or the other region because i know i cannot find employment then then that's not a good answer because the board member can say to you well you move all the way to canada uh, to start fresh and now i see you find a job then i think you will be able to relocate in this region then I start thinking about that um what are the key issues that the board member is going to look identity credibility internal fly alternative subjective fear generalized risk and state protection then identity they want to know if you are the person you are saying that you are from um i have cases that a board member don't believe that the person is from a certain country then if they don't if you don't resolve your identity uh then the the board member is going to ask you question about that and they will not move to discuss the rest of the key issues because they said okay i don't know who you are i don't believe that you are from this country then i cannot talk more about the case then and you can be rejected um if your identity um they don't believe you but if your identity is a problem the IRB, the board member, will send you a letter and they will request you before you hit um, that you have problems with your identity. Don't worry, they will not wait the day of the hearing saying to you, oh, by the way, I don't think so, you are from this country. No, they will let you know before the hearing if you have problems with that. We know many refugee claimants come to Canada with a, with a, a no a, a, valid passport a true passport they use another identity then those are the ones who sometimes 
they need to prove who they are. The second one is credibility. Um, because sometimes in your narrative, you put some things in your forms. Uh, remember that is a form called a Schedule 8 that they ask you what you have been doing for the last 10 years, where you have been living. Sometimes uh, there are contradictions between that form and the narrative. That's why I'm telling you, go back and read it. Or the board member is trained to ask you questions. And the day of the hearing, if your story is not true, then they will go around and they may find out that uh, you are contradicting yourself and then that they, they, they will not believe you. The third one is the internal fly alternative that I already told you. The board member may say, okay, why you didn't move to this other part of, of the country? And they will tell you the city and they will tell you what are the conditions there, um, why you don't feel safe there. And um, we have many cases that they said, sorry, I believe you, but also I believe that you will be safe in this other part of the, of the country. Uh, the other one is the subjective fear. That one is like, I am part of um, um, a political opposition uh, party in my country. And um, in my town, they, yes, they kill two of the members. And um, I didn't receive um, official threats towards me, but I was sure that because I was part of the political party opposition, they were coming uh, for me to, and I moved to another part, and in an other part, they, they are persecuting um, the party too, then that's why I believe that my life was going to be a risk generalized risk. They are going to see if what happened to you is, is because of you, is, is your particular case, or if it's happened to anybody. Um, for example, I got, a, uh, I was uh, receiving threats because of extortion. They were telling me if I was not going to pay a ransom, they can kidnap me. Then the board member is going to see it does happening to more of the citizens in the country, then it's generalized risk. Then you need to think, okay, if that happened to me, why me? You need to, to, to take your case from that everybody else to see why you, where you were targeted by that person or by that group. And the last one is state protection. If you access to state protection or you couldn't access to state protection. For example, if you are part of the LGBTQ plus community and you couldn't access to state protection because there are laws against of the LGBTQ community that is prohibited uh, to have a same sex partner, then there is uh, really uh, a strong evidence why you couldn't access to state protection. Um, or the one that I provide the example already about the corruption and the police. Those are like the main key issues that the board member is going to look after. Um, again, uh, gathering evidence. Don't wait until your lawyer called you and said, okay, this is the list of things. Try to see as soon as possible how are you going to, to prove your case? If you know that you went to the hospital, that you suffered injuries because the attacks, you know that you're going to need a report from the from the doctor that treat you out of the hospital, and you know that that's going to take you some time. Then try to go and get that evidence. If you know that your neighbor was the witness of your case, that you're going to need him to 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 have an affidavit, like a sworn declaration saying, yes, I was present when he was attacked by the police, for example, or he was attacked by the gang members of the neighborhood. Then try to be creative, empower yourself, and, and go and see your basis of claim and say, okay, how am I going to prove this? Then uh, go and try to get the evidence. Don't wait for your lawyer to tell you. And also the lawyer is going to review the evidence and is going to say, okay, this is good or oh, no, this is not good, I need this and this. Uh, but just 
don't sit at home and wait that your lawyer will will let you empower yourself and and see how you are going to prove your case and if you go and check the guidelines the links that i told you in those guidelines there are more information about what are the things that you are going to need for your case um then yes while you are waiting check the country conditions and personal evidence and here is the link that you can find the national documentation package also what is the personal evidence again proof of your identity um if the board if the board members are asking you the irb is asking you who you are then try to get your identity as soon as possible resolve that because if you don't prove who you are or the country that you are coming from then they will not move forward to the rest of the things that happen to you if you were part of a political group religious or ethnic group try to see how you are going to prove that you were part of that group if you if you have a membership card or if you need unauthorized letters or affidavits from officials or members of that group try to gather them as soon as possible um medical reports um if, if there is pictures um or if there were reports on the newspapers then try to get all that if they are in another language remember that you need to translate them mm. Again, if, if you, uh, for example, if you are a survivor of domestic violence and you access to a mental health um, a treatment back home or you uh, saw a psychologist, then you need to have access to the reports or if you, when you came to Canada, you have uh, access to all the um, support, psychological support or, or counseling support, then please um, have those uh, reports uh, ready for you. Also, if there is a that you need a medical report from back home, um, make sure that those reports are complete, that the doctor will, will say, okay, I'm um, a psychologist with experience in survivors of domestic violence. I work in this clinic because I see some reports that just said it's a little two sentence letter saying, um, I was the doctor of this person and I saw this person three times. That's not a good evidence. That will say nothing to the IRB. Then it needs to be a good report. Mm. Again, the, the evidence is need to be translated. And uh, for the person who asked me in the, in the questions chat, um, um, again, if you know a person that speaks your language and has a good command, written command, command of English, that they can um, translate the documents for you, you can use this uh, following certification, okay? and um but make sure that the translation is 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 good that then you can avoid to pay um those if it's like for example if it's a newspaper report or it's a human rights report that is in your language you can ask that person to to do this certification but again if it's official document for for example if it's an affidavit from your country, it's better that you have a professional uh, um, translator to do it. But if it's just a big report, you can use this following certification if you have somebody that speaks your language and speak English or French fluent. Um, okay, this is our second break, but I'm going to use the break just to uh, continue with the questions. Okay, um, I stop here. I submit my claim March 6. I'm supposed to have uh, eligibility interview on March 18, and I haven't received my brown paper and work permit. And Canada Immigration Services haven't get back to me. Yeah, um, unfortunately, uh, there was there is many people that even claim protection since October 2019, and they haven't been called for the eligibility interview. Um, 
we know that CBSA and IRCC have resumed calling people for the eligibility interview, but uh, because Toronto is in a lockdown again, um, I don't have information if they resume again the eligibility interviews, but I'm, yeah, I'm really sorry, until you get your eligibility interview, you will not have access to work permit. But at the worst, remember that you can apply to Ontario Works. I know sometimes you cannot survive with that. And I know most refugee claimants, what they want is to work in Canada. But unfortunately, um, until you get your eligibility interview, you will not get your work permit. Um, okay. Um, is proof of means financial support required in this case? Sharing, but in what case? Um, Sharing, could you explain more? It, is proof of mean of financial support required in this case? Okay. As a refugee claimant, 20 years old, I'm able to admit, to be admitted to grade 12 class. Um, okay, as a refugee claimant, um, if you are 23, if you can take a uh, grade 12 class. Yes, but it's called uh, le adult learning education is for adults. Um, but uh, then you need to contact uh, one of the school that is called uh, adult learning education and you can take uh, grade 12 class and you need to apply for your study permit but after the school accept you uh, this is a, a question from md misanur raul uh, if you have a study permit does it mean that your working hours will be limited if you have a study permit and you are an international student yes you can only work 20 hours um during the time you, that you study when you are on holidays from a school like summer break or winter break you can work a uh, full time but if you are not an international student you are a refugee claimant and if you have a study permit you you don't have a limit of hours the limit for working hours is only for international students refugee claimants that have a study permit you can work as much as you can Okay, Iman, Candy, just to make sure that I understand what time this session will end, as I know it should be until 12. I have an appointment. Sorry, um, yes, was scheduled until 12, but there is many questions and um, um, I will be here uh, and I will try the, the, the webinar. Um, Probably we will we will go over 12. Sorry about that, but um, really I don't want to rush. I want to go all over the questions. Imani, you need to go. Sorry about that. Um, do they? Uh, but you can have access. We are recording this webinar. Then you can go back and check it out. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, do they deport Iraq citizens even they get negative decision? Um, people from Iraq, Afghanistan, Yemen, um, they are no uh, Burundi, they are not removing people. Um, they, there is a list that is called uh, administrative uh, deferrals or moratorium countries, and Iraq is one of them. Request for reviewing of documents and can I still enjoy a hearing again? Yes, I explained that if they review your documents and if they believe they can decide your case without a hearing, they will do it. But if they think they still need you ask questions, they will do it. Okay, Shady? PSW short course will be okay for qualifying and working as a pandemic screening security. Uh, Yahidul, you, I don't know if, if a short course will work. What they want is that you work and you have experience doing it. And you, the experience can be, um, you can qualify until August uh, 2021. Uh, please just skip the question three. 
Afolabi. Um, okay, Afolabi, I'm going to check what was. What is Legal Aid? Legal Aid is an organization that in Canada assists refugee claimants to pay a lawyer. Okay. What about working in a school as a kid? Farah, um, I don't think you qualify. I have my refugee scheduled for February 2021, and I already have a report from a psychologist, but unable to get help from a doctor due to pandemic. Is there any implication for my claim as to why I don't have visit a doctor even after getting a report stating that I see a doctor for PTSD? Hola, segundo. Um, but do you have a family doctor? Uh, because the, the family doctors are seeing people uh, virtually. And you can explain uh, to the IRB if they ask you um, that uh, you couldn't get access to your doctor because of the pandemic. Um, okay, Raul, I already had my biometrics and I was supposed to go back for my eligibility interview, but we went locked down. Um, how many days I should wait? Sorry, I, again, there is people waiting since October for eligibility interview. And right now, Toronto is in a lockdown and the office of CBSA and IRCC are in Toronto. Do I have a list of lawyers which should hire it for hearing? Uh, legally, I have a list of lawyers. Uh, also, you can contact us and depends of what kind of, of case do you have, we can recommend you some lawyers. Um, it is necessary that I use an interpreter. Depends if you don't feel comfortable uh, with your English, um, you need an interpreter, but if you believe you will understand anything, you don't need an interpreter. I'm living in Toronto, but I apply from Montreal. That affect in my hearing. Um, uh, Ruchika, you can keep your hearing in Montreal. That will not affect you. How can I renew my social insurance number? Um, Hassan, um, you can renew your social insurance number with your work permit. If you renew your work permit, you can do it through uh, the Service Canada website. Uh, but they are going to ask you for your uh, work permit needs to be valid, okay? Um, Service Canada is closed, but if you go to the website, um, there is a, uh, an application that you can do it um, through internet. Iman, could you please tell me when expected to finish? Okay, sorry, until I answer everybody, Iman, I don't know. Um, if there is a, but again, Iman, you can see our uh, recorded webinar later. Yahidul, is there a problem with date before hearing? Can I amend it? Yes, Yahidul, if there is a date, talk to your lawyer and you can amend it. I'm a PSW working and I have work between the months mentioned and I'm going to school as well, but I only have 112 hours. Can I still apply for the pathway? Well, they, Temitopi, they said 120. Uh, but again, check it out on, on the 14th. And again, they said, if you don't have the 120 hours experience, uh, this application will still open until August. Then don't rush. If you know that you don't have the, the 120 hours, Temitopi, wait, because you are close to that. Already renew. Um, this application is not that they have a top that um, there is sometimes some pilot project that they say, okay, we will only receive 500. No, don't worry about this. It's open for any everybody that will qualify as a healthcare worker, as a refugee claimant, as a rejected refugee claimant with a valid work permit, working as a PSW, working as a nurse or a nurse aide. Uh, then this application is going to be open until August 2021. Then uh, make sure that you qualify, go and read on December 14, everything. Uh, Hassan already renewed my work permit and now I need to renew the SIN number. Okay, I, I explained that you can do it through the 
um, Service Canada. And Hassani, you need help, you can contact us. But it's really simple. Go to Service Canada. Um, there is um, um, an online application and you can scan and send everything and you will get your social, ins social insurance number. Okay, Cherine, uh, we are talking about the study permit, apply. Is need for financial proof required? Cherine, if it's a study permit as a refugee claimant, um, the financial proof, um, you don't need to prove that you have money to go to a study if you are a refugee claimant. This is for international students, but if you are in Canada as a refugee claimant, you don't need proof of financial. If you are receiving Ontario awards, what they want is to say, okay, I, in that section that says financial, they, you, they want you to, to ask, okay, how much you pay for rent and how much uh, you receive from Ontario awards, or if you are working, how much you are making. But they will not deny you because financial, okay? Cherim. Jose, can I bring my family here to Canada after my hearing? Um, well, if they, uh, Jose, if they decide you are a convention refugee or you are a protected person, means they say yes to you, you can apply for your permanent residency and then you can, you, you need to apply for them and they will receive the permanent residency and they will be able to come to Canada. Masi, will you follow the webinar and then answer the questions? Thank you. Um, yeah, Jose, um, probably you can call me and we can talk more about your family. Okay, Iman, you have, okay, you have your hearing on December 14th. Okay, sorry that you had to go, Iman. Um, Jose, you said you are waiting for more than a year for your hearing. Yeah, um, I'm really sorry. Uh, unfortunately, I have people waiting two, three years for a hearing. Then call me to see what we can do. Uh, Chutika, no, the board member will ask why you apply from Montreal and live in Toronto. No, no, that will not affect your case. Okay. Um, okay. Jose, you can call me. Okay. Then let's continue. Okay. What is going to happen the day of the refugee hearing? Um, they will ask you arrive 30 minutes before. Unfortunately, you will not be able to go inside the building until they call you and you are ready to go. They will expect you to use mask and follow all the directions. Uh, they will make you to fill out, to complete a self-assessment because they want to make sure that uh, you don't have symptoms of COVID. Um, they will ask you to have uh, ident your identification. Um, also, if you have a lawyer, probably your lawyer will already told you if you have uh, children that you don't need to take them to your date of the hearing. Um, um, also, um, if it's a big family, uh, what is going to happen there? If, if it, we are talking about if the hearing is in person and you need to go to the 74 Victoria, to the IRB building, um they will if you have a big family they will put the main applicant together with the interpreter the irb member and the lawyer together and the family will be put in a separate room because uh because safety concerns they because coordinating they don't want in uh, all these people together but they will be in a separate room if the irb member wants somebody else to testify that day, then they they can uh come and they will be close by okay um if you have a hidden date and something happened to you that day and you cannot appear then you need to uh in in five days you need to present yourself for a special hearing. Then if you don't present yourself in five days after your hearing, 
uh, because you were ill, something happened to you, then they will declare your case abandoned. Then make sure that if you don't go the day of the hearing because something happened, uh, you were hospitalized. I don't know, you have an accident. I don't know, something really prevents you to go. Make sure that if you have a lawyer that they, they know what happened to you because if no, the ARB may declare that you abandoned your case. Um, then the day of the hearing, um, or even if it's virtual, make sure that you understand the interpreter. There have been many issues with interpreters that um, uh, some people, even they understand English, they prefer an interpreter. Then if you notice, or any family member or, uh, notice that the interpreter is not doing a good job, please don't let that to continue. Stop, tell your lawyer or tell the board member that will not affect your case. Um, and, and said, I'm really sorry, but I don't, I don't understand the interpreter. Sometimes refugee claimants come from countries and in different regions, there are idioms that are interpreted different. Please make sure that if you feel that the interpreter is not doing a good job, let them know, okay? Don't, don't let continue the hearing happening. It does going on. Um, then um, also um, when they start the hearing and if it's virtually also make sure that you have a copy of your case that the file that everything that was submitted um, if it's at the at the in person at the 74 Victoria in Toronto the board member will uh, pass to you a copy of your file, but it's going to be virtually, make sure that the lawyer provides you with a copy. You don't have it, ask for that. You have the legal right to have it. Because during the hearing, the board member can ask you, okay, I want you to go to page 30. Can you please look at that picture and tell me who's in that picture, for example? Then you need to have a copy of your case. Um, if they ask questions, please try to answer what they ask when asking you. Don't go over and try to, to go over the question. If they ask you exactly when this happened, uh, where were you or with whom, just provide short answers. If the board member wants more explanation, then after they said, okay, when this happened, then this happened August 30th. That's the answer that they want. But if he wants to go forward, then they can say, okay, on August 30, uh, you were attacked by this person. Then tell me, describe what happened on August 30. Okay? Don't, if they ask you when, then August 30, blah, 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 blah. No, they just want the short answer. And if they want more explanation, they will um, request it. Okay? Then they 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 will if they said describe then you now can describe okay. Um, then again, um, we already talked about this. What the IRB IRB member, the decision maker, is expecting from you? Then um, they are going to go around why you were forced to flee your country of origin. If you go back, what is going to happen to you? Uh, if you seek help from the authorities, if you move from another part of your country. I already explained this in detail. Um, who is going to be present? Then again, the board member, who is going to decide your case? Your lawyer, your interpreter, and your legal counsel, your lawyer. And sometimes there is another person that is called the minister representative. Um, but the minister representative will only be a present in your hearing uh, and they will tell you before the hearing. Uh, some people worry where the minister representative is part of the hearing is because sometimes the minister wants to oppose that you become a, a, a protected person because the minister found something about your case or they believe that you already have protection in another country, or they believe that you are not the person you are saying. But the minister representative only will be present um, 
it, and they will let you know before they hit it. And they will let you know, okay, the minister is going to be present because they believe that you lied, for example, on this and this and that. And you will have time to reply before the minister the day of the hearing, okay? Um, then um, the day of the hearing is 15 persons. Um, they are going to have all the measures. And one thing is that in persons hearings, you must have your mask. You cannot remove your mask. Then if you have a hearing and you know it's going to be in person, try to practice to give your testimony using your mask. I know sometimes it's hard, but if it's virtually and you are um, not sharing the same office of your lawyer, then probably you don't need to use a mask. But if it's a virtual hearing and you're going to be in the same room with your lawyer, probably you are going to need to use a mask then try to practice giving your testimony with the mask. Then what happens after the refugee hearing? Um, then um, the day of the hearing, sometimes the board member can give you an answer. And most of the time it's a positive answer. It's called bench decision. They can say right away, congratulations, you are a convention refugee or a protected person. But if you don't get a positive decision right away, don't worry. Sometimes the board member needs to clarify something or they need to go and check um, uh, any issue that was uh, relevant during the hearing, but he needs to check a document or, or a human rights report. And they go and check. And sometimes even they don't give you the positive decision right away, they will send it you after that. Um, then sometimes if um, the decision may take another couple of weeks for you to get it. When you get your positive decision, then uh, you can apply for your permanent residency uh, and you can do family reunification. When you get the document from immigration, um, the IRB Immigration and Refugee Board saying yes, you are a convention refugee or protected person means you want the case. Um, then now you need to apply for permanent resident. To become a permanent resident, you need to pay five five hundred fifty for your application and for any person who is part of of in in your decision, um, your spouse partner and kids and if the kids are less than 22 they will pay 550. Also if you are alone here but uh, your uh, spouse and children are back home you can start the process of family reunification. It means that you need to pay for them, apply for them in the forms and um, then uh, after you receive your permanent resident, they will receive them and they will be allowed to come to Canada. But again, you can on, on, only be reunified with your spouse and children. I'm really sorry you cannot be reunified with your, your mom and dad. You cannot be reunified with your brothers and sisters. I know some people will tell me, but I declare them in the basis of claim. Even if you declare them in the basis of claim, you can only be reunified with your spouse and children. Um, unfortunately, and now the, because COVID-19, there are delays with the processing, but um, um, make sure that when you apply for your, for your uh, permanent resident, you uh, declare your family again and you pay for them. If you get a ne negative decision, uh, you can apply uh, to the federal court and you can apply to the refugee appeal division. Then you have like, if, they, if you receive a negative decision, you have like two, two possibilities of appeal. The first one is the refugee, refugee appeal division. And um, you will have 45 days to perfect the appeal. But I'm going to give you an example. For example, tomorrow, December 11, you receive a letter saying that your case was rejected. Then from tomorrow, you need to count 15 days. You will have only 15 days 
to tell the refugee appeal division that you are going to appeal your case. And then you will have extra 30 days to perfect your appeal. And you can have legal aid to have a lawyer to help you with the appeal. If legal aid said no, uh, they will not support your case, please contact us. Uh, we will try to help you. Also, if the, again, the Refugee Appeal Division reject your case, you can go to the federal court. To appeal to the federal court, unfortunately, we cannot do it for this. Most of the time, you need a lawyer. And if again, the federal court reject you, you can do a humanitarian and compassion application. To do an, a humanitarian application, there is a bar of 12 months, but there is an, two exemptions um, that if you, as a rejected refugee claimant, you have children that are less than 22 in Canada or back home, or if anybody involved in your case have a health issues, then you don't need to wait 12 months. And if you are a single person and you don't have a health issue, then you need to wait 12 months. From where to count the 12 months? If you apply to the federal court, the day that you receive the decision in the federal court, or if you only apply to the Refugee Appeal Division, the day that you receive the negative decision, you need to count from that day 12 months. Also, before removing you, sometimes Canadian Border Services, that, that is the agency in charge of removing rejected refugee claimants, um, they will contact you. And if uh, you have been after your rejection, you have been here for 12 months, you may have the opportunity to apply for the pre-removal risk assessment. But to apply for the pre-removal risk assessment, you need to be called by CBSA and they need to offer you to do it. The pre-removal risk assessment for rejected refugee claimant is not an application like the humanitarian compassionate. You can decide to do it. But the PRA, you need to be invited to do it. And for that, again, you need to be after the rejection 12 months in Canada. For this, there is no exemptions, OK? The exemptions from the 12 months bar is only for humanitarian and compassionate. And the PRA, what is the PRA? The PRA is like you need to prove that you're going to be at risk back home. But you can know. Uh, send the same case or same evidence, the one that you were rejected. In, you need a new evidence that something happened back home. Then the, the rate of positive decisions for pre-removal risk assessment is very low. We NGOs, no governmental organizations, we say that it's only 1% of acceptance. Immigration said it's 3%. Then anyway, the rate to get a positive decision for pre-removal risk assessment is really low because you need new evidence that something will happen to you after you re your case was rejected. But they cannot remove you um, doing a pre-removal risk assessment. That the pre-removal risk assessment will stop any removals from Canada. But again, you need to be invited to apply for that. Again, this is my contact information. Uh, my email. Um, I'm going just to check if there is any more questions. Um, Olorua Timi, what is the cost for the children less than 33 years? No, you can only be reunified if your children are less than 22. Um, and there is something that is called lock age, means, for example, we know that refugee claimants wait uh, for a refugee hearing for three years, for example. Then the, the lock age for family reunification for children is taken from the day that you claim that you receive your refugee ID. For example, when I claim protection, the day that I receive my brown paper, my refugee ID, my son or my daughter was 20. And today that they decide my case, my daughter or son is 23. I can still be reunified with my child, 
because the day of my re that I claimed protection, my child was 20. Doesn't matter that now it's 23. But in the day that I claimed protection, that I received my refugee ID, my child was already 23. Sorry, you cannot be reunified with your child. And that person, that child can pay 150. Um, okay, do you have any practice hitting? We, if you have a lawyer, we don't do, we cannot intervene to um, to give you an orientation for your hearing. But if you don't have a lawyer, there is um, an organization that is called Matthew House. Uh, they have um, um, a hearing preparation, but for those that are without lawyers that are representing themselves. How can I be a member of your organization? Yeah, he do. Well, check it out. Um, check out our website. There is sometimes opportunities for uh, volunteer positions. Okay, thank you, Loli. Okay, um, my name is Diana Gallego. Uh, Loli Rico is our co-director and I'm using her account to do this webinar. Um, what is the normal time to get a hearing from Montreal? Um, the, the backlog and the waiting in Montreal, in Toronto, in Vancouver is the same. Um, really, there is no difference. Um, okay, the rest is saying thank you. I know that somebody says I skipped the question number three. Um, Okay, I don't know. I don't know which one. Then you you can send me. Um, you can send me. If I didn't answer your question, you can send me a question to my email, uh, or you can call me. My email again is Diana Gallego at fcjrefugeecenter.org, uh, or you can call me, and my extension is two two five. Okay, uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, again, check out the, the guidelines that we have here and um, I hope all the best for you in your coming here. Okay, bye, thank you.